Well, our use of water is tremendous, so the volumes of water we use is uh, extraordinary and unsustainable. So we're leading to problems with water pollution, uh, water scarcity around the world. Um, it's a problem for two out of five people now. They don't have enough water. Um, and that's going to get worse over time. We're looking at three out of five people by 2025 won't have enough water. Um, that kind of scarcity manifests itself in different ways depending on where you are. Some places it means water restrictions. Other places it means you have no water at all and you're going to have to move because you just don't have enough water to sustain yourself and your family. Well, as I mentioned, the two out of five people currently are facing water shortages. So for a month or two or even longer, every year, they're having to deal with water shortages. Uh, that can be as bad as not having enough water to drink or to wash your clothes, or in other places in the world, it can be uh, water restrictions where you're limited to just a certain amount of water you can use during the day. This is a, a problem that's going to increase with time as we continue to consume more water and with climate change, which is disrupting the precipitation patterns around the world, water's falling in different places than it used to or drying up other places. So it's becoming a crisis. The World Economic Forum continues to say year after year, the biggest threat humanity faces is water crises. Energy is the second biggest user of water. Um, in the United States, it's a particularly large uh, water footprint for energy, uh, almost as big as agriculture. You need water to generate uh, electricity in coal plants or gas plants or in nuclear plants because basically those are systems that boil water. So they got to suck water out of lakes and rivers, sometimes from underground, and you heat it up to make steam, to drive a turbine, to produce electricity. A lot of the water in those processes is lost. It evaporates, disappears into the atmosphere. We can't use that water again because it's gone into the atmosphere. Sure, it's part of a water cycle, but the water ends up somewhere else, not in the place where we took it from. Other forms of energy, such as solar and wind, don't need water to generate electricity. A solar panel might need a little water once in a while to wash some dust off, but generally speaking, they don't need any water uh, to produce power. So it's another uh, you know, benefit of green energy is it's not a big water consumer. So fracking is a process of pumping high-pressure water and chemicals underground to release little pockets of gas or oil. Uh, sometimes two miles below the earth. Um, fracking uses about five million gallons per frack, um, and that water is contaminated by the chemicals that are used, as well as the stuff that's under, well, way down two, two miles below the earth. And it's not recaptured or reused. It's very hard to clean. So with this contaminated water, it has to be then um, pumped even deeper underground to safely dispose of it. This is a permanent removal of water from the water cycle. This is the first time on a massive scale that we humans are taking water out of the water cycle permanently. There's other impacts of uh, things like fracking. Because of pumping all that water uh, underground, it's created uh, all sorts of earthquake problems in much of the Midwest, uh, Nebraska, Arkansas. Many of those regions where this is happening, uh, it's generating hundreds of small quakes and sometimes some big ones. And it's destabilizing the crust, uh, the earth, underneath many, many communities. Um, it's continuing. It's only going to get worse. So with biofuels, we're growing corn or soy to turn it into uh, a fuel to, that we can burn in, in our cars or trucks. Uh, those plants actually don't have a lot of energy. So you're taking a green plant and trying to turn it into something like gasoline. That's not a very uh, efficient or smart thing to do because, energy, because there isn't that much energy in one single plant. 
got to remember that oil and, uh, is the product of millions of years of plant matter that's been crushed under the earth under tremendous pressures and temperatures. And there's tons and tons of this uh, vegetable matter that went into making uh, the oil that we have today. Um, so we're trying to duplicate that process in a much shorter time. It's not working very well. It's very inefficient. It uses huge amounts of water, uh, ethanol and uh, uh, soy diesel. Is a, has a tremendous water footprint because you've got to produce all this, all this plant material using huge amounts of water and fertilizers. So you have water pollution and a huge amount of water to produce not very much fuel. So if you can imagine uh, a car going down the road, if its tank is full of uh, ethanol or even 10%, really what it's doing is it's carrying on its roof a gigantic bag of water because that's how much water it took to make that fuel. The, the bag of water is many times larger than the vehicle. Um, and as we all know, water is very heavy. So it really doesn't make any sense, but that's the thing we're doing. Well, American water use has become, has always been, I suppose, um, inefficient and wasteful. Uh, we've always assumed we can get water, you know, it's like the frontier me mentality. We always assume we can get water somewhere else. If we don't have enough, well, we'll get some more. Um, so the, the giant uh, aquifers that uh, America has, most of them are going dry because we always assume there's going to be more water. And so we just keep pumping them and pumping them, even though uh, we now know what it takes, how much water we could take on a sustainable basis, that hasn't stopped. Continue to take more than, than uh, can be sustained. Um, so this particular mentality means that we are uh, using much more water than we need to. We could be way more efficient with our water use, but we're not because it's just simply uh, not part of our thinking when we come to make decisions about how we use water uh, or even awareness about uh, how much water is being uh, used to make the food, the clothes, uh, the things that we have in our houses. Mm -hmm.